right, here is our fourth homework key. Start off with a good one. Uh, derivative of secant times tangent. It's important to realize this is a product and we have to use the product rule. Now watch how kind of crazy this will become. So the tangent slope generator. We learned today that the tangent slope generator of secant is secant x tangent x. This is the derivative of the first times the second. That's tangent x. Plus the derivative of the second secant squared x is the tangent slope generator for tangent times the first. Notice what uh, we could do to simplify easily. Tan x times tan x we'll write as tan x squared or tangent squared x is the same way of writing tan x squared. It's the same. And then here secant squared times secant secant cubed x. Uh, so if we'd like to, we could factor out a secant if we want to, but uh, this is fine. We have a quotient. We need to use the quotient rule. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom tangent slope generator for cotangent is negative cosecant squared times the top all over the bottom squared. I'll simplify this a little bit. Negative sine x cotangent x, this will turn into plus uh, cosecant squared x cos x. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I bet you we could simplify this like you did back in pre-calculus where uh, if I rewrote these as like sines and cosines, stuff would cancel. And I'm going to do that, but is this necessary? No. Since cotangent is cosine over sine, and you know what? Actually, like this is showing me that this is uh, this is unnecessary. Watch what I could have done at the beginning. Rewrite this. This is one of those like simplify first situations. <laughs> this is funny. This is cosine x times sine over cosine. The derivative is just cosine. If I simplify this fully, I'm going to get just get cosine. Um, this shows you sometimes you want to simplify first or else your tangent slope generator is messy. No. Is it still correct? Yes. But you would find uh, through a lot of simplification that this turns into that. Okay? Cotangent, cosine over sine. Rewrite this as cosine times sine over cosine. Boom. Y is just sine. It's tangent slope generator is just cosine. Uh, pretty neat. Good, good example. I even got caught up uh, on it right away. Um, I went straight into taking the derivative. I didn't even think, oh, we should probably simplify first. So... Uh, maybe simplify first, it's easy. This you can't simplify, that you can't simplify, so we're going to have to use the product rule. Tangent slope generator of the first times the second plus tangent slope generator for cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent times x squared. Maybe I factor out a x and a cosecant. Is it necessary? Nah. Uh, let's do the same thing here. Go to the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Maybe 
factor out of cosecant here. Necessary? Not necessary. But be prepared to do it. If I have x squared, f of x, and I want to find the tangent slope generator. This is preparation for our table problems. We're going to use the product rule. This is a product. Take the derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second, you're going to say the tangent slope generator for f is just f prime times the first. You can leave it like this. You can factor out an x if you want to. Sometimes they will. But that's the tangent slope generator. Something like this. You have to use your rules. So make sure you use the quotient rule. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. I will simplify this. I can factor out an x. And I can cancel this x with one of the x's in the denominator. I'm going to make sure I distribute this x squared squared to be x to the fourth. Boom, gone, gone. This should be x cubed. Find the second derivative. Fantastic. So take the derivative and take the derivative of the derivative. Cosecant, negative cosecant, cotangent. Take the derivative again. Now make sure we're comfortable with this notation as well. This would be d squared y over dx squared. And I'd have to use the product rule here. So it's going to be messy, but it is necessary when you're taking the derivative of this product. Derivative of negative cosecant will be positive cosecant, cotangent, the derivative of the first piece, times the second. This is the product rule. Plus the derivative of the second, negative cosecant squared, times the first, negative cosecant. I'm going to simplify this. You got two cotangents. You got three cosecants. Negatives cancel. You can factor out a cosecant if you want. Leave it like that. Okay. Second derivative. Here's the first. Power rule. This is nice and easy. Here's the second. Great. Find the 52nd derivative if our function's cosine. Well, we're going to see a pattern if we start taking derivatives. First derivative is negative sine. Second derivative is negative cosine. Third derivative is uh, negative positive sine. Derivative of negative cosine would be positive sine. And then the fourth derivative, we are back to where we started, cosine. So every fourth derivative, we get back to cosine. So if I get to the eighth derivative, back to cosine, 12. So let's look at 52. How many times does 4 go into 52? Does it go in perfectly? Uh, I think it does. Yeah, 13 times. So this is the fourth derivative. 13 times, essentially. That'll be cosine. Now, just uh, so we know, just being careful, um, if I ask you what the 53rd derivative is, you'd get the 52 and then take the derivative again. So that would be negative sign. And the 54th derivative, you'd get to 52, take the derivative two more times. Okay, next one. We should be comfortable with this notation representing the third derivative. 
But notice, I'm already given what the first derivative is. So all I need to do is take the derivative two more times. So taking the derivative of the first derivative gives me the second derivative. Use the product rule. Take the derivative of this to get the third derivative. So though it's the third derivative, I actually had to just take the derivative twice. Don't use the product rule here. Use the product rule here. Uh, whatever. Just do it as we see it. Drew to the first times the second plus drew to the second times the first. I could simplify this actually pretty easily. We got a cos x plus a cos x. So I would say I have two cos x's minus an x sine x. Okay, same deal. This is the fourth derivative, but you're already given the first derivative. So I just need to take the derivative three more times. So here's the second derivative. Here's the third derivative. And here's the fourth derivative. Here, this would be the notation for the third derivative. Usually it's three tick marks, sometimes it's a three, but I'm given f, so I have to take the derivative three times. I got 2x. Let's remember that this can be written as x to the negative first. You have to use uh, the power rule in a numerator. So this will turn into negative 1, x to the negative second. I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm going to have to just keep taking the derivative. Derivative of 2x is 2. This turns into positive 2x to the negative third. Third derivative, the 2 goes away. This turns into negative 6x to the negative fourth, which is negative 6 over x to the fourth. All right, table problems. Here we go. We have some information. We're trying to find specific derivatives of specific functions like j's derivative at 2. So i got to find j prime. Now, two ways we can handle this too. We can leave it out. And then take the derivative of the product, making sure that we use the product rule. Or you can kind of bake it in. So baking it into the uh, g of x, you'd say the derivative of 2g of x is 2g prime of x times f of x plus the derivative of f of x times 2g of x. Okay, now the rest becomes just finding values. So j prime of 2 is, I don't know, let's do this one. 2 times g prime of 2 is negative 1. f of 2 is 4. f prime of 2 is negative 2 times 2 times g of 2 is 3. So I got negative 8 plus, this is negative 12. So I get negative 20. h prime of 3, if h of x is x, g of x, product, use the product rule. Drew to the first times the second, plus zero to the second times the first, plugging in 3. I get 1 times g of 3. G of 3 is 4 plus G prime of 3. G prime of 3 is negative 2 times X. You're plugging in 3 wherever you see X. So this turns into 3. 
which is 4 plus negative 6, which is negative 2. All right. I got G over F. I purposely put G over F to try to confuse you because when I introduced the rule of the quotient rule, I have F over G. So don't let this confuse you. Think derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Okay. Uh, plugging in four. G prime of four, negative three. F of four, three. So negative three, three. Minus F prime of four, negative four. G of four, two. F of four, three. So I get negative 9 minus negative 8. That's negative 9 plus 8, which is negative 1 over 9. All right, here we go. R prime of 2. R of x is equal to x squared over 2 f of x. Two ways to handle the 2. You'd either leave it out and say r of x is equal to one-half x squared over f of x, and just worry about the one-half later. Or you could bake it in. Now, I'm going to tell you that, especially with the products, with the quotient rule, that it is easier to leave it out. Okay, I'll, walk. Uh, I'll show you. If we did the derivative over here, I'd have one-half, Quotient rule, derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom times the top. All over the bottom squared. Whereas if I baked it in, the derivative would be the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared and the twos would be much more kind of uh, bothersome especially when you're doing your calculations so I'd probably prefer this uh, when doing calculations let's go ahead and find some values at two so I just need to find f values at 2. f of 2 is 4. f prime of 2 is negative 2. So r prime of 2. f of 2 is 4. f prime of 2 is negative 2. So this is 2 times 2. That's 4. f prime of 2, negative 2. This is 4. This is 4 squared, right, f of 2, well, it's 4, f prime of 2 is negative 2. Okay, good. All right, and then simplifying this, I have 16 plus 8, so I have 1 half, 16 plus 8 is 24 over 4 squared. This 1 half and the 24 simplifies easily to 12 over 16. 12 over 16 simplifies to be uh, 3 fourths. Okay. Would have been probably more difficult with all this because you'd have to square 2 times 4. It would have been a little bit messier. All right, here we go. S of X is G of X cos X. <laughs> Excuse me. 
product rule. Stir to the first times the second. Plus, stir to the second times the first. Plug in pi. G prime of pi is negative 4. G of pi is negative 2. G prime is negative 4. G is 2. But negative 2, my memory is small. G is negative 2. My thing just froze. Oh, there we are. That's negative 2. So, we've got negative 4 cos pi plus negative sine pi times negative 2. Sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So, this becomes positive 4. No, oh, this is messy. Okay. I could distribute the g of x if I wanted to. So let's do two ways. Distribute. Kind of simplify first. I get 2g of x f of x plus g of x minus 3f of x. Or just like product rule right away. If I distribute first, my tangent slope generator would be... And again, with the 2, you can leave out or bake in. I don't know, sometimes... I leave them out. Sometimes I bake it in this situation. I'll go ahead and leave it out. Drew the first times the second plus the drew the second times the first. Drew to gg prime. Drew of negative 3f plus negative 3f prime. Product drew right away. I'm going to have to write small, but it would have been g prime 2f plus 1 plus 2f prime times g minus 3f prime. Uh, what's easier? I don't know. Maybe the product rule right away would have been easier. Whatever. I'm in it. Let's do this. Keep going. t prime of 3. Okay, I'm going to find some values. I'm going to pull off the homework that way. I don't have to look back and forth. Okay, so 2 times g prime of 3 is negative 2. f of 3 is 2. f prime of 3 is negative 3. G of 3 is 4. G prime of 3 is negative 2. F prime of 3 is negative 3. Okay, just being very careful, not making any mistakes with arithmetic, which I probably have made already, but uh, let's hope I didn't. If you find any mistakes, nice. Let me know. So, this is negative 4, this is negative 12, negative 2, this is positive 9, because it's a minus negative 9. This is negative 16 times 2, which is negative 32, plus negative 2, plus 9. So, negative 34 plus 9, or negative 32 plus 7, so 25. Okay, moving on, now I'm giving you graphs. I have the graph of G here in red and the graph of F here in black. And I want to find the following values because if I find the following values, I'm going to be able to answer these questions because we're going to get our information like we have in our table. The information is going to come from the graphs. Like what is F of negative 3? Well, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. F of negative 3 is 1. F prime of negative 3 would be the slope of the tangent. Since this is just a straight line, it's the slope of this line. The slope of this line is negative 1. What is F of 1? Here's 1. F of 1 is negative 1. 
What is f prime of negative 1? Well, the slope of this line here is 0. f of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Thing for us. It's coming back. I hope it doesn't like freeze freeze. There we go. Okay. F of one, two, three, four is one, two, three. F prime of four is the slope of this line. I'm going up two over one. The slope of that line is two. Okay. Do the same with G. G of negative three is two, but G prime is zero. The slope is zero. G of one is one, two, three, four. What is the slope of this line? It's one. G of four, negative one. Slope of the line, negative two. Okay, so like keeping in mind how we find those values. These are function values, they're y coordinates. These are tangent slopes, slopes of the line segment. All right, here we go. Since we have all that information, as long as we know how to find this, okay, because I'm not going to tell you these things in the future, uh, we can answer all these questions, like h prime of 1. So I got f prime, g is a product, use the product rule, plus g prime, f at 1. f prime of 1 is 0, g of 1 is 4. G prime of 1 is 1. F of 1 is negative 1. So here's my answer. 0 times 4. 1 times negative 1. Negative 1. G, J prime of negative 3. Product, use the product rule. Or the first times the second plus two of the second times the first j prime of negative three is f of negative three is one f prime of negative three is negative one times negative three I have one plus three which is four Again, look at this. 3 over 2. Man, I'm going to leave it out. It will reduce messiness of derivatives. Okay. Okay, prime. Left out. Get rid of the top. Times the bottom. Minus get rid of the bottom. Times the top all over the bottom squared. At 1, negative 1, 0, 4, 1. Negative 1, 0, 4, 1. All right, so I got k prime of 1 is 3 halves, negative 1 minus 0 over 1. So it ends up being negative 1 times 3 halves, negative 3 halves. Finish strong here. A couple more. Leave the two out? Sure. Why don't we leave it out? Is it necessary in this case? Actually, probably not, because it's like just the derivative of 2x. But, uh, you know, it's up to you. Leave it out, bake it in, whatever. Let's bake it in. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Let's see. 
G and G prime at 4, negative 1 and negative 2. Make sure you plug in 4 for X. Negative uh, 1 squared. This is negative 2. This is 8 times 2 is 16. So negative 2 minus 16 is negative 18 over 1. Negative 18. This is a good one because you might think product rule, product rule not necessary. 3f prime. If you use the product rule, you still get 3f prime. It would just be uh, a little bit more uh, involved because you'd have the derivative of 3 is 0. So instead, constant times the function, constant multiple rule. And the derivative of the next piece, derivative of the first times the second, plus derivative of the second times the first. That's x squared, not 2. And at one. Let's see. F prime of one is zero. That's nice. Two times one times G of one is one, two, three, four. G prime of one is one. So I have zero plus eight plus one, which is nine. All right, distribute first, don't distribute, up to you. I'm going to not distribute. I'm going to just use the product rule right away because I know the derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of the first piece times the second plus the derivative of the second piece. Derivative of 2f of x is 2f prime. The derivative of 3 is 0. So the derivative of the second piece is 2f prime times the first. Plug in negative 1. Now, what's really important everybody is doing these without like staring at the key. You've got to make sure you get these correct first derivatives. If you don't get these correct things, if you make mistakes, if you include this like negative three in the derivative of two f of x minus three, you're going to get the wrong answer. So you got to be very, very careful, very, very diligent when you are uh, doing the derivatives, using your rules, making sure each little piece's derivative is correct. Uh, let's see. f of negative one Oh, you can't really, this isn't, I think I'd put this, I put this for a reason. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. So f of negative one, if you look up at your graph, like we didn't, we didn't talk about negative one. If you look at f of negative one, I see the y coordinate is negative one. Okay, great. So I got two times negative one minus three plus two times f prime of negative one. What do we have here at negative 1? A sharp point. Because of that sharp point, there is no tangent slope here. So, turns out, maybe I did this on purpose just to give you a heads up. And it's a good heads up because I've seen questions before where it's like, hey, tell me what the derivative is or tell me if it does not exist. In this situation, this derivative does not exist. Why? Because there's a sharp point on f or g at x equals negative 1. That's good. Uh, good thing to keep your eyes out for, for like test questions. All right, that's it. Thank you.